Hi everyone, it's Sylvia here again, and I want to welcome you to Bread for the Journey. We're going to continue on in our reading, and I know that the reading for today is as exciting as it always is is there's going to be a comparison and i hope that you can see it is i want to do a comparison a contrast between josiah and his time and even looking at uh nahum and his time a different nation different people but yet still the same concept the concept of what it is when we seek god and we find him remember the bible clearly promises that we will if we seek God with all of our heart, we will find him. Jesus says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you'll find and knock and the door will be open unto you. What is he talking about? He's talking about finding him, finding the kingdom, finding God. He's telling us that in essence, when we find him, when we seek him, we find him in his word. See, to seek God means to find his word. And in his word, we find the nature of God, the character of God. We find his attributes. We find the will of God because, see, the word of God is the will of God. And the will of God is the heart of God. God's heart is not based on his emotions, his intellect, or his will. Like oftentimes, we allow those things to determine what we feel and don't feel and don't want to do and all of that. God's heart is that he loves his creation, all, large and small, young and old, everything in between. Amen. And in this, I hope that we really, really get to see again the word. So I want to share some reading with you and then we're going to go to Nahum and we're going to look at this and then look at the response. The response is different, but we see because we see and gleam who God is. Now, I'm going to grab my glasses real quick. Amen. And then I'm going to begin to uh, read unto us. Again, um, Josiah began reigning on the throne when he was eight years old. And he had a heart for the Lord. He loved God and he wanted to know God. I mean, he was seeking. He saw that the God's house was in disrepair, that it was messed up. The house is the temple. And he wanted to make sure that it was restored. He sends uh, his men there. And as they are preparing and they're restoring the house, they find the book. And when they find the book, it is read to the king, and the king responds to hearing it. He tears his clothes, he puts on sackcloth and ashes, because he realizes that his ancestors that before him, and him and the people, have not obeyed the word of God. See, seeking God means loving God. It means having a heart for God and the things of God, desiring him, wanting to please him. Again, obeying God is not about laws and orders and structure. It is about loving him. And because we love him, we obey him. And that makes it easy to follow the, the rules, the regulations, the structure and his requirements and his commands. Remember what Jesus said? If you love me, you will obey me. And I just believe it's as simple as that. The greater the love, the greater the obedience. Why? Because the love causes us to surrender unto God, to become that living sacrifice that he asked us to be and to look for ways to please him. And again, it is not about earning or I got to work my way. No, no, no. When you love someone, you want to please them. When you love them, you want to do the things that uh, make them happy, that cause their hearts to be delighted. And our relationship with God is no different from that. You know, many say, I'm a friend of God, praise the Lord. But do you have friends that you don't want to make happy, that you don't want to, uh, you know, satisfy, that you don't want to please? I don't think so, because you wouldn't be friends very long. And you want your friends, not as blind robots or just going through the motion, but because they love you and you love them. And that's the same way it is with God. Now, I'm going to read something here. And so it says, it says, and the king, they gathered unto him the elders and of, of Jerusalem. Now he has found the word of God. 
He has responded and now he's calling everyone. And the kings went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord, the book of the covenant is the word of God. It is about a covenant relationship. And in a covenant, there are standards, there are statues, there are decrees. And he understands that. And he knows that the things that they've been doing, chasing after other gods and other idols and doing whatever pleased them broke the covenant and it needed to be established. But he also understood that it wasn't enough for him to get himself in order. But he had to get himself and all the people, the entire throne, into order. So he brought in from the least to the greatest, the greatest to the mightiest, every single person. And see, that's the heart of God. And that's what God wants us to do. And I believe that truly he wants to save us, but he also wants to save our entire family. He wants them to get in order because God is about families. Amen. And in three, the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimony, his statues with all their heart and with all their soul. See, again, he didn't do it just for himself, but he's doing this for the people because he understands. See, saints, here's the other point. When we truly find the word of God, the truth of God's word, then that word requires a response. And that response causes us to not just want to do and obey God for ourselves, but we want everyone else to come into alignment and agreement. Alignment and agreement with the word of God. It is exactly what they had obtained when they were in Acts chapter 1. It is why the Holy Spirit came. And the Holy Spirit is at work in the Old Testament, just like in the New Testament. Glory be unto God. Amen. I'm going to continue to read. And he says, uh, again, to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant, but were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant. In other words, Remember what Jesus said? The word of God tells us, even in the Old Testament, Moses says we are to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, might. Heart, soul, mind, and strength, depending upon what version it is. This is the response of the love of God. The response to the love of God, when we get the word of God and we realize that we're out of order, that love causes us to want to get back in order. And that's exactly what Josiah was doing. And Josiah goes on, you know, and as a result of that, he knows that he's got to get rid of every idol, everything that is an abomination to God. Everything they placed in the temple, in uh, worship to Baal, everything that they placed there in worship to the asterisk poles and all of this other foolishness. He says, we've got to clean these things up and we've got to get rid of them. Saints, I believe that that's exactly what we need to do. Is there anything that you've invited into the temple of God? For you are the living stones. You are the very temple of God. We are. We are. And I'm not being pointing my fingers or just saying you, you, you. No, it's a we. But we must allow the Holy Spirit to inspect us and then bring to uh, our attention anything that's there that is a defilement that, you know, contaminates and pollutes this holy temple. Because he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. We serve a holy God and a God that will not give his glory to anyone. A God who loves you so much, he doesn't want to share you with idols. You are for him. I am for him and him alone. Now, Josiah and the priest and all the elders, what they did was, and um, they 
destroyed, they killed, they, I mean, they burned, excuse me, they burned all of everything that was dedicated, like I said, to bow, to Baal, to the asterisk, and to the host of heaven. See, we are not to worship the stars, the moon. We're not to worship or get into astrology. None of that stuff. Amen. We are to worship God and God alone. And he destroyed these things and he got them out. And in 6 it says, And he burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder therefore upon the graves of the children of the people. Now, doesn't that remind you of when Moses in the book of Exodus, when he had came down because God had entered into this marriage ceremony with them. He's bringing the bridal price. He's bringing the bridal covenant. That's what it was. He was bringing that for them to come into agreement and they were worshiping these calf had picked up some other idols and as a result of that he smashed them and burned them and he put them into into pieces again what we're seeing is because the word tells us that Josiah loved God and he loved him like his forefather David did Sometimes when you have a chance, go and count the kings that were between David and Josiah. And finally, here's one that has the same desire and the same love for God. Now, that's a different thing, so I'm not going to go there, but just wanted to point that out. And again, he destroyed it all. He didn't leave anything. Remember, his father was a wicked king. So here's the other point I want to make, that it doesn't matter where you came from or how you started or that you didn't know or you weren't raised in a Christian. God will give all of us an opportunity to seek him, to find him, and when we do, be able to come to him. Glory and honor be unto the Lord for he is good. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now quickly, I'm going to read something from, um, you know, Second Chronicles. I want to be able to take us there. Amen. Glory be unto God. And just read from it. Again, in Second Chronicles, it tells us that Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 30 years, too. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of David, his father, and declined neither to the right or to the left. Oh, my goodness. Saints, can you see that it's possible? And what makes it possible? The Holy Spirit and the word of God. Now, going on into verse number three. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the molten images. See, at 12, he got it. So you and I, no matter what age, we can get it too. And when we do, let's be like Josiah and begin to allow the word to penetrate our hearts, to change our lives, and to cause us to rid ourselves of any and everything that is not of God. Blessed be his name. And then in um, 34 and 20, 31, 34 and 21, and the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies, his statutes with all of his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. Saints, that is exactly our response and what we should do. Make that covenant, make that vow to God that we will do just that and that we will obey him and we will obey his word. 
See, obedience over sacrifice, and God is pleased when we obey. Now, I'm going to fast forward real quickly because, again, I said it was a contrast and a comparison that I wanted to do. And remember, when we get to Nahum and the prophet is prophesying to them, he is prophesying not it's a rosy day, everything is great and wonderful, God loves you, but he begins to tell them because this is the nip. This is, again, Assyria. Remember Nineveh and the book of, of um, Jonah? God had already given them a warning. They heard it. They fasted. They prayed. They respond. But see, here's the example. Is The example is that the initial response is great, but we must be steadfast, maintain, stay the course. Amen. Well, in the process of time, they have turned away and gone back to their wicked ways. And as a result of that, God sends Nahum, the prophet, to prophesy. And here's what he said. I'm going to read. And the burden of Nivea, the prophet of the vision of Nahum, the Echosite, God is jealous and the Lord avenges, the Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemy. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Now, here is what, here is what uh, Nahum is telling us. Nahum is telling us that, again, God is the God that brings revenge. God is jealous. He's a jealous God. He's jealous for you and me. He's jealous for his creation, and he created everything. He's the creator. He is slow to anger, but that will run out when people continue to do. Nations disregard, disrespect, do whatever they want to do. Then God has a response, and when that response comes, he's giving us and showing us the power of God, the strength of God, who God is, and that we must understand whom we are dealing with. Amen. Remember in the book of Jonah, God relented. But this time, they have not repented, and God will not relent. As I've said many, many times, no repentance, no relentance. And we cannot repent once and then just go back to doing whatever and think God is okay with that. God is not okay with that. Saints, let's choose the path like Josiah did. Amen. That affected a nation, affected everyone in righteousness for God. And they followed it 31 years. He didn't waver to the left or to the right. It is possible for us to live a life that is pleasing to God, a life that is without sin. Now, we will make mistakes, but without sin. Or we can choose that he's warned us and we do it for a minute. We backslide, backslide, and we go back to what we're doing, and there are consequences. And we see that in uh, the book of Nahum. God is God, and yes, he loves us, but God does not play. Saints, let's get right, and let's be in love with him, because we're in love with his word, and when we love his word, we want to obey him. God bless you. Enjoy your reading. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.